Hi, this is Bio 108 Plants and Society. I'm Peter Brown. We're going to talk about plants that feed the world, and this lecture focuses on the grass family. We may think of grass as stuff that grows on our back lawn, but half the calories that feed the world come from rice, wheat, and corn, which are all in the grass family. Here's a farmer in Africa, and he's growing sorghum. So it looks kind of like corn, but at the top, that's where all the grains are found. And so he's harvesting his sorghum plants. Uh, so here are some learning objectives. So by the end of the lecture, you'll know something about the grass family and rice, wheat, and corn. So there are lots of reasons to grow plants, maybe grass in your backyard. Uh, there are plants like trees that are used to make fuel. Uh, People use plants to make wood and build their houses, medicine. But we're going to focus on this lecture of uh, food crops, plants that are grown as food. And like we just said, that half of all the plants that feed the world are in the grass family. And here's a young corn plant. And it looks kind of like grass when it's at this stage. As it gets bigger, it looks less grass-like. But it's very upright. It has parallel veins. It's a monocot. And this is showing that half of all the calories are from these three plants, rice, wheat, and corn. And on a worldwide basis, uh, corn with their ears, with their many grains, has a bigger yield. And wheat and rice are about the same in terms of yield. Uh, in terms of the grass family, they're flowering plants. They're uh, monocots, which means they have one seed leaf or cotyledon. The fruit of the grass is called grains. Uh, corn, wheat, and rice are all grasses. So if you look at rice, it's in the Poaceae family. Its genus is Oryza, and its species is Sativa, the common Oryza, with them, the satisfying Oryza. Now, the grass family is a really important family. It's very widely distributed. There are 11,000 species. Species are different kinds of uh, plants. So there are 11,000 different kinds of plants in the grass family. And about a quarter of all the world's vegetation belongs to the grass family. So no matter, no matter where you're on earth, you're probably close to a grass plant. Uh, you usually call maize corn instead of maize. It's the number one crop plant in the, in the United States. Part of that is due to government policy. Part of that is due to its high grain yield. Uh, before the Europeans came here in the 1400s, it was unknown in the old world. Its domestication traces to about 10,000 years ago back in Mexico. And here's the anatomy of corn. It's a very tall plant. It can be taller than uh, you. At the top is the male part, which is called the tassel. And it produces a pollen, which contains the uh, sperm inside. Along the leaves down below are the ears. And in a big plant, there can often be multiple ears. And if you peel back the ears, that's a female part, and it contains uh, many grains. Every grain's an individual, so it's uh, multiple fruits. Uh, watch the video Pop Secret and take the quiz, and that will uh, tell you something about the history of corn and its genetics. Uh, here's Indian corn. It's called flint corn. It was hard like the rock flint, so that's why they call it flint corn. And it has to be cooked in order to eat it, and so it's cooked into a, a mush or a grits or a polenta, and that's how it's eaten. Notice that it's many different color kernels on it. So um, Barbara McClintock did some work with Indian corn, and she showed that the genes moved around between the kernels. Uh, before that, people thought genes were fixed in place on the chromosomes and didn't move around. So she won the Nobel Prize for that, which is like the Super Bowl of Science back in 1983. All right, so corn's the uh, highest yield in the United States, and this pie chart just breaks down what corn is used for. So the biggest use of corn, 39%, is for animal feed. So if you're having a hamburger, the, ham, the cow's likely eating corn. If you're having chicken or eggs, the chicken's likely, likely eating corn. Pigs are eating corn. If 
They're drinking milk or cheese. They likely fed them corn. Okay, so that's the biggest use of corn. Number two is ethanol fuel. They take the corn and they ferment it into uh, alcohol, and the alcohol is added to the gasoline in the winter time here in Arizona. So ethanol fuel. Uh, export. We grow corn very well in this country, so a lot of it's shipped to other countries. Uh, we'll talk about other industrial in a minute. High fructose corn syrup. So that sweetener that makes everything sweet and is really bad for you. That 3%. Industrial starch. So it's used in a lot of things we're not familiar with, like making paper. Paper is made with starch. Uh, food, food's only about 1%, and alcohol that are drinking alcohol is another 1%. So, all right, here's a book by Michael Pollan, and it talked about uh, how corn was used. One thing he said in the second paragraph, about a quarter of all the 45,000 items in the supermarket are made with corn, so about 11,000 items. This goes for non-food food items as well, toothpaste, cosmetics, disposable diapers, trash bags, cleansers, charcoal briquettes, matches, and batteries. So a lot of that non-food industrial is all these different products that you wouldn't really know it, but they're made with corn. All right, if you go to Home Depot, you'll see they sell Mexican Coca-Cola. Some people like it better. What's the difference? And it's made with sucrose from sugarcane, which is also in the grass family. Uh, starting about 35 years ago, the U.S. Coca-Cola company switched to high fructose corn syrup. It's less expensive and it saves them money. Uh, some people think the uh, Coca-Cola made with sucrose tastes better. It has sort of a more of a bite to it. Okay. In the U.S., corn and wheat are two of the top crops, but the third one is soybeans. We'll get to soybeans in the next lecture. Uh, rice is grown uh, in the United States, but it's mostly grown in Asia. Okay, and you can see that uh, uh, 30 years ago, corn and wheat were number one, and soybeans was kind of down below at number three. And today, uh, it's corn and soybeans that are planted on the most land area. Because corn has a higher yield, you get more yield from corn than soybeans. And then wheat is number three. All right, so we're on to rice. So rice is also in the grass family, and it's the most um, calories in the world from it eating, eating directly. A lot of corn calories come indirectly when you eat hamburger or eggs or milk. Okay, so 95% of the rice crop is eaten. Over half the world's population, three billion pe people, use it as a dietary staple, especially in Asia. 85% um, of it is grown in Asia. I used to have a, a roommate, uh, office mate from India. And he said, I eat rice at three meals a day. I said, even breakfast? He said, yep, even breakfast. So it was first domesticated in China 10,000 years ago, and it spread from there. The other two crops we discussed, wheat was domesticated in the Middle East and corn first domesticated in Mexico. Okay, uh, in the U.S., it has to grow in warm climates, so Arkansas, California, and Louisiana are the leading rice growers. A lot of the rice we grow here is exported, and the leading market for U.S. rice exports is Mexico. Uses a lot of water as well. Here's a video that grow, shows how rice is grown in Asian patties. You can also have dry land rice not grown in patties. But go ahead and look at the video, and, and it's very interesting. As you look at the video, look at the roots at the bottom. Uh, look at how it's a mini branch plant. Those branches are called tillers. And then the grain is at the top. It's on a spike, and there's a flag leaf that comes off near the grain at the top. Uh, this is something called golden rice, and it was developed 20 years ago as a solution to vitamin A deficiency. Beta carotene is made by our body into uh, vitamin A. And so scientists said, oh, they're going to uh, use it in poor countries and they'll have beta carotene in their diet. And so they won't be deficient in vitamin A. 
You hear the countries around the world that are deficient in vitamin A. You can see the highest levels of deficiency are in Africa and India. And vitamin A can lead to blindness or death. And about a half million children under the age of five die or become blind each year due to vitamin A deficiency. 20 years later, uh, they're still not growing golden rice. So watch this video on your homework will ask you the arguments uh, in favor of golden rice and why countries around the world are still not growing it. All right, here's wheat. And most people will tell you, oh, I don't eat wheat. But most wheat we eat is made from wheat flour. So if you eat bread for breakfast, lunch, and supper, you're eating wheat. Or generally, you're eating wheat. If you eat a lot of pasta, like macaroni and cheese, you're eating wheat. Countries that produce a lot of wheat tend to be cold weather countries. Although some is grown in China and India, the US and Russia grow a lot of wheat. Uh, this shows the uh, anatomy of a wheat kernel. And on the outside is a hard seed coat. Inside is mostly starchy endosperm. So white flour is just starchy endosperm. But whole wheat flour in includes the seed coat or the bran, and it includes the growing embryo. So there is a baby plant starting to grow inside. Sometimes that's called the germ. All right. As opposed to the uh, figure 4.8, which showed um, acres growing, this shows the price of these crops per uh, bushel. Okay, so dollars per bushel. So uh, soybean has the highest price now. It's almost $15 a bushel. And if you looked at the amount of land area in figure 4.8, farmers are growing more soybeans. Okay, they're not stupid. The price is higher, they're growing more. And here's wheat and corn. And you can see that the price per bushel is about the same, but the yield of corn is higher and there are government subsidy programs for corn as well. So a lot more corn is grown than wheat. Uh, the origin of eat, wheat is in the Middle East. And so it was domesticated about 9,000 years ago. And somebody went in and they do, did a drawing of uh, the painting on the wall of a tomb. And so this tomb was went from somebody who died 3,000 years ago. The drawing was done in the 1920s. And it shows uh, the person who died harvesting wheat. Uh, the genetics of wheat is very interesting. All mammals and a lot of plants are diploid organisms. That means they get one chromosome from mom and one from dad. A lot of plants have more than two chromosomes. So lilies have four, they're tetraploid. Wheat has six, it's hexaploid. Strawberries have eight, they're octoploid. So if you were a wheat plant, you get three copies of every chromosome from mom and three copies from dad. Uh, wheat is one of the few grains that contains the protein gluten. When we add baking soda or yeast, it produces carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide captures, is captured by the gluten, and so the gas makes your cake rise, or your cookies rise, or your bread rise. If you don't have gluten protein, then you can't capture carbon dioxide. So if you made cornbread without any wheat flour, it would be very flat. If you made um, pancakes without any wheat flour, it would be very flat. And so the gluten protein is important if you like a risen product. Some people are um, have autoimmune reactions to gluten, and it's called celiac disease. People used to think it's very rare, but if you click on this link, this link is from the University of Chicago, and they're suggesting maybe that 1% of North Americans uh, would do better on a diet without gluten, that they have some sort of reaction to gluten. Okay, the people of uh, Mexico who are Maya Indians still call themselves the corn people because they were dependent on corn. What about your diet? Do you eat bread and pasta? Are you a wheat person? Do you eat a lot of uh, cheese and milk and hamburger? Are you a corn person? Are you a rice person? Maybe you're a potato person.
Here's some other important grass crops. Barley is the fourth ranked grass crop. It's grown to a large extent for beer. Sorghum that we saw in the very first slide in Africa is one grain product that goes ver grows very well in tropical countries. We're familiar with sorghum mostly from, uh, if we, you get bird seed, that little round pellet is sorghum. And then sugar cane is not grown for the grain. It's grown to make white table sugar and it's used to uh, ferment into alcohol. So if you're ever in Brazil, a lot of cars run on alcohol that's made from a sugar cane. Those are all members.